So those individuals who have dedicated their lives to propagating the holy name of the Lord, they should be respected. We should not criticize them just out of envy. If we have some practical suggestion to make, we can give it to them in a nice way. But there's no need to criticize why advanced price numbers out of envy or hatred. Prabhupada said, we are all suffering from heart disease. Heart disease means we all have material desires in the heart. So there are three stages in chanting the holy name. Just like the three types of devotees we were discussing the other day, Kanishta Adhikari, Madhya Madhikari, Uttam Adhikari, three stages of chanting the holy name. One is the stage of offensive chanting. Second stage is when you try to minimize your offenses. Third stage is when it is pure chanting. So, in the beginning when you start chanting Hare Krishna, you may be chanting with offenses. But then, as we advance, at least you must try to minimize the offenses. So, the ten offenses which we are discussing should be avoided. So, first offenses to blaspheme those who have dedicated their life for propagating the holy name of the Lord. Those who have dedicated their life for propagating the holy name of the Lord are very dear to the Lord. So, if we have some practical suggestion, we can give it in a nice way. But we should not let envy influence criticism. The second criticism is to consider the demigods to be equal to or independent of the holy name of Lord Vishnu. The demigods are getting all their power from Krishna. The scorpion lays his eggs in the rice and the less intelligent person thinks the rice has given birth to these eggs. But it is not the rice, it is a scorpion. So similarly the holy names of the, similarly the demigods, whatever benediction they get, they give. Whatever power they have, it's all coming from Krishna. Just like in a government. Let's say in your country you have Mr. Gorbachev as a president. Now Mr. Gorbachev has a cabinet. In that cabinet there may be 30, 40, 50 ministers. So similarly Krishna also has a cabinet. But if you know how big his cabinet is, then you'll be shocked. In his cabinet, there are 33 million ministers. And these ministers are the demigods. So the demigods are empowered administrators. Just like you have minister for business, minister for textiles, minister for foreign trade, home minister in your country. So Krishna also has minister for rain, minister for air, minister for light, all these different ministers. So these are 33 million. So just see how big Krishna's cabinet is. So the devotee understands that whatever benediction the God gave is actually coming from Krishna. The next offense is unjust to disobey the orders of the spiritual master or to consider the spiritual master to be an ordinary man. The devotee does not look at the spiritual master from a materialistic point of view. The, the devotee listens to the instructions of the spiritual master. So, um, the business of the disciple is to follow the instructions of the spiritual master, which is to remain involved in activities of devotional service and to stray away from Maya. So, the devotee, if he takes the instructions to heart, then he will never deviate. Prabhupada said one should act in such a manner, thinking that the spiritual master is standing next to him. And if you are acting in that manner, thinking the spiritual master is standing next to you, then you will never fall into Maya. In the Srimad Bhagavatam first canto part one, Prabhupada says, he dedicates that book to his spiritual master and he says, he lives forever by divine instructions and the follower lives with him. So, the spiritual master lives by his instructions and the follower lives with him. So, one should accept the instruction of the spiritual master as one's life and goal. And just like one cannot separate the body from the soul, one cannot separate one's life from the instructions of the spiritual master. So, one should accept the instructions of the spiritual master and one's life and soul. One should not think that the business spiritual master is just going to flatter me. Rather, properly to say the business of the spiritual master is to find fault in the disciple so that he can improve. Then, to blaspheme the Vedic literature or literature in persons of the Vedic version, that is, the Vedas were compiled by the Supreme Lord in the form of Vyasa. So, Vedas talk about Veda Shastra and Samhanda Adhidaya Prayojana. We talk about how to develop love of God. 
So the Vedic scriptures talk about how to develop love of God. So we should not think the Vedic scriptures are compilation by some ordinary human being. And the Puranas. The Puranas are known as sometimes as the fifth Veda. And of all the Puranas, which is the topmost Purana? Bhagavad Purana. So one should not think, oh, the Vedic scriptures, they were compiled 5,000 years ago. Now we are in 20th century in Soviet society, the Vedic scriptures have no relevance. Just the, this, the Vedic message is known as Sanatan Dharma. Sanatan Dharma means the eternal religion of the living entity. Just like the eternal religion of sugar is sweetness, the eternal religion of water is liquidity. Similarly, the eternal religion of living entity is the service of Krishna. Just because we are in the diseased condition, we cannot appreciate the beauty of Krishna. Just like when a man is suffering from joiners, he cannot appreciate the sweetness of sugar. As we get the disease, uh, as, we, as the joiners goes away, one can appreciate the sweetness of sugar more and more. So similarly, as we get a mature disease taken away, we can appreciate the sweetness of sugar more and more. Blow, 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 blow. So, we must accept the Vedic conclusion and the eternal religion. And we have seen how this Krishna consciousness is in the such the people of all walks of life. Whether you are in Africa, or in Soviet Union, or in America, or Europe, or India, or anywhere. Because this is a very simple formula. So the Vedas are not sectarian. The Vedas are not Hindu. Vedas are the mother for the whole humanity. We should not give some mundane interpretation to the chanting of the holy name. We chant the holy name. When we chant Hare Krishna, what are we doing? We are praying to the Lord. Please engage me in your service. Please engage me in your service. Please engage me in your service. So we should not think, oh, this holy name has some other meaning. Also, we should not think that the glories of the holy name are an exaggeration. You know, sometimes devotees think, oh, the holy name cannot be so powerful. Cannot be. It is not so powerful. Besides your holy name, I need some other yajyas also. No. You must understand, Ekala Ishwar Krishna Arthur Bhatta. Krishna is the only master. We are all his servants. And Kali Kali Nama Rupa Krishna Vata. Krishna stands in his holy name. So just the holy name is enough to give us the highest goal. So, uh, another offense is to commit sins on the strength of chanting. Prabhupada used to say this is the most serious of all offenses. You know there's offense. Uh, so, very often, sometimes the devotee even thinks, now I'm chanting Hare Krishna. By my chanting of Hare Krishna, so many of my sins are going away. Now I can commit fresh sins. So, somebody says, oh, now I've been chanting for five years. So many of my sinful reactions have now gone away. So now if I commit some new sins, there will be near problem, no problem. A devotee does not want to be a burden on Krishna at all. So, we should be very careful that we don't commit sins on the strength of chanting. If a devotee thinks, now so many of my sinful actions have been rectified because of my chanting, now I can commit fresh sins, this is very bad. Therefore, the devotee is very careful not to commit any sin. Parikshit Mahan, when you heard from Sukadeva Swami, the explanation of the hellish planet. He said, just like an elephant goes and has a bath, then comes out of the water and dirties its body. What is the use if we uh, go and atone in the for our sins and again we sin again? So we must be very careful to avoid sinning because engaging in sinful activities is bad for spiritual advancement. Arjuna wanted to know. How is it that one may have knowledge, but one is still forced into sinful activities? So Krishna said, it is lust only, which is the eternal enemy of the living entity, which is always burning like fire and is never satisfying. So, <clears throat> if we take shelter of chanting, then we can overcome the influence of lust. Just like, you know that story of Haridas Thakur, how Haridas Thakur was absorbed in chanting. The prostitute came to steal her intelligence, steal his intelligence. But what happened? 
the prostitute became a devotee of Haridas, <laughs> and Haridas was not affected. And on another occasion, Maya Devi wanted to test Haridas, so she came in the form of a very beautiful woman, and she was making all these attractive poses, so Haridas was not affected. She was attached to the holy name. So similarly, if we are attached to the holy name, then we would not uh, become a victim of illusory energy. Then we should not consider the chanting of Hare Krishna as one of the auspicious ritualistic activities which are offered in the Karma Khanda. <coughs> karma Khanda means what? Business transaction, fruitive work. You you do you do some yagya, but in exchange for that you want some mature benefit. Hare Krishna chanting is to develop pure love of God. Next is to preach the glories of holy name to the faithless. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, Jari Dakutahe Kaho Krishna Padesh. Preach the glories of the holy name to everyone. But here we are saying, don't preach the glories to the faithless. So what do you do? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, tell everyone, tell everyone to chant and tell ninth of senses not to preach the glories to the immune so the answer is, you tell everyone to chant Hare Krishna, but the real glory would be Hare Krishna mantra. You only tell someone when he advances spiritually. Just like if you meet somebody on the street and he says, what's your name? So if we attentively chant, take the medicine, read, and take the medicine and the diet, then we will recover spiritually. In order to recover from a disease, you have to take the medicine and you have to take the diet, isn't it? Like when you are sick, the doctor will give you a medicine, but he will also tell you, now don't eat this fried stuff, don't eat sweets, don't eat oil. So Prabhupada said Krishna consciousness means taking medicine and diet. Medicine is chanting Hare Krishna, reading and the process of Vaidhi Bhakti which we were discussing yesterday. And diet is? Diet is execution of devotional service. So, you must practically execute devotional service in the association of devotees. And then you will always be healthy, wealthy and wise. <laughs> in, in, in English there is a saying, everybody wants to be healthy, wealthy and wise. Who doesn't want to be healthy? Who doesn't want to be wealthy? And who doesn't want to be known in society as intelligent man, wise man? But you can only be healthy, wealthy and wise. If you follow the Krishna conscious platform, if you only eat Krishna Prashad, then you will definitely be healthy. If you are chanting Hare Krishna, then you will have spiritual wealth. I just told you that story in which the Brahman threw away the touchstone to get the holy name of Krishna. So when you chant the holy name, uh, you will get real wealth. Just like these days, people don't care much for the rubles. They say, oh, these are this money. Whether it's dollars or rubles or rupees, day by day the value is going down. But the holy name's value never goes down. And one who chants, he will automatically become wise. So he'll become spiritually healthy, wealthy and wise by chanting the holy name. So with these words, I'll end our discussion on the principles of Krishna consciousness that we discussed today. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So I have 45 minutes left. I will take on some Vapros and after the Vapros I'll maybe talk a little bit about book distribution and I'll end at 1 o'clock and after 1 o'clock, 1 to 2, I will be in my room. Anybody wants to see me can see me or if there are any personal questions. Okay. Yes. Uh, can one change the holy name and at the same time see that Krishna helps some other person? Even if you want to ask something, ask Krishna. Don't and don't and nobody else. Even if you want to ask Krishna for something, ask only Krishna, nobody else. Is it possible during Japa to think about this, that Krishna help someone? When you're doing Japa, it is better you just concentrate on the Japa. Yes. This is uh, three million of them, but it is for only our universe or for the whole creation. That's all. For creation. Uh, how to accept the destruction of the spirit? How to? 
Can you accept this instruction of the spiritual master as a black and sin? How do you accept? Thakur Bhakti Vinod said, just like you cannot separate the body from the soul, you cannot separate your life from the instructions of the spiritual master. So, you accept the prince, the instructions of life and soul when you think, my spiritual master knows what is best for me. When the child is thinking that my father knows better than me, then he will listen to the father. But when the child thinks, I know more than the father, then he doesn't listen to the father. So, when the disciple thinks, I'm a fool, I do not know what is good for me, but my spiritual master knows what is good for me, then he will make advancement. Just like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he was chanting the holy names of the Lord, he was engaged in some different process in Banaras, and the Mayavadi scholars asked him, why aren't you reading the Vedanta when you are a Sanskrit scholar? But he said, my spiritual master considered me to be a fool, so he said, chant. Hare Krishna. 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 One can accept hundreds of Diksha Gurus, but one can have only one Diksha Guru. But the Diksha Guru is also Siksha Guru. If the son accepts huh? Sanyas and parents are liberated, but if the father accepts Sanyas and children If the father accepts Sanyas, there's a good chance the children will definitely benefit. Definitely. So, one day you want to take Sanyas? <laughs> How old are you? What year? This is a very noble desire. Just like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's brother, Vishwarupa, when he took sannyas, the parents were crying. But then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Oh, but because of his sannyas, now you two will get liberated. <laughs> Just like you see in ordinary karmi society, when one man becomes a big man, suppose one man becomes a minister, doesn't matter which part of the world. Then all his relatives also they all become rich. <laughs> <laughs> so when one man becomes the devotee of Krishna, everyone benefits. Just like you see, even if your parents are not favorable to Krishna consciousness, I'm sure due to the influence of the children, they at least become have become vegetarians, or at least they are vegetarians when you go and visit them. Even if your parents don't agree, still. They forcibly hear the word Krishna and all, so it has an effect. Can you tell us a story about the um, disappearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in India? Some devotees hear about it. He entered into Murti in the temple. Now, these past times about disappearance are not so important. It is important that we concentrate on the past times. Where then they display one and then on the teaching. Krishna comes and Krishna goes on his own sweet will. Similarly, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also he comes and goes on his own free will. How to learn to control such senses as anger, hatred? Uchin Kharashova Pros. Very good question. <laughs> so we this is what we have been discussing for the last few days. We can control lust, anger, greed, envy, hatred, our enemies of spiritual life by attentive chanting, reading. Yesterday I gave you the example. Um, by reading, you can make a spiritual intelligence very sharp. Just like the doctor, the surgeon in the hospital. He has a knife which is very sharp. The moment that doctor's knife touches your skin, your skin is cut. So we should make our intelligence so sharp that the moment these desires of sex and lust come into our mind, we cut it, slice it into pieces. So that is possible with spiritual knowledge. So when you chant and read, your spiritual intelligence will become so sharp that you can easily discriminate between what is right and what is wrong. But if you don't chant and read, then your intelligence will not be so sharp.
Prabhupada not want us to be sentimental devotees. Sentimental devotee means, oh, I say, I'm attached to Krishna, I'm attached to Krishna, I love Krishna. But I don't follow his instructions. <laughs> yes, killing of plants is also sinful. We agree with you. Therefore, our philosophy is, the plants which are killed must be offered to Krishna in the form of prasad. And when the plants are offered to Krishna in the form of prasad, those plants that were killed, they get liberated. So we are against vegetarians also, even though vegetarians are definitely better than meat eaters. Like all these flowers you see, if these flowers are offered to Krishna, then the flower gets liberated. So this is the transcendental art of liberating the plants. <coughs> Offer everything to Krishna. Hmm. It, it seems to me that the plants say that they get the plants of human form of life. So they become liberated. They liberated means they go they go upward towards perfection. They may get human birth or they may get liberation directly, both are possible. More vapros. In Soviet Union, most of people are atheistic and when you distribute books, very often people ask who is there and how better answer. People are by and large atheistic today all over the world. In America, in every dollar bill, they write, in God we trust. Because those people who founded the American Confederation country, they were very religious. But if you examine the activities of the Americans, they don't trust God. Because they say we trust God. But then if you trust God, why do you kill God's children? So by and large, people are atheists everywhere today. So the question is, how do you convince them about Boda? You tell them, there has to be a controller of everything. Just like in your country, there's a president who runs the country. Uh, when you see the cars moving on the streets of Kiev, now you know that there is a police commissioner who is controlling the traffic in Kiev. A small child, when he sees the plane flying, he thinks the plane is running on its own. Yeah. But an adult, when he sees the plane flying, he knows there's a pilot piloting the plane. So, the atheist, when they are asked who is behind the whole show, they have a standard answer. They say, nature. So who is controlling nature? <laughs> Krishna says, Maya Dakshina Prakati Suite Sa Chara Chara. This material energy of mine, this material nature is mine, it is my property. Just like today, I was telling Achyuta when he was driving me that I see in Kiev so many green trees everywhere. There's a lot of greenery in your city of Kiev. Now the greenery is there, which this means that people like nature. And the trees are there because somebody has planted the trees. Somebody is looking after these trees. So, so you have to convince you know, who can who can do what God has done. Just like people these days are very fond of computers. Like just if you cut the nail from your finger, in that little bit of nail that you throw away, the computer can keep thousands of items of memory. So we are giving all this credit to the scientists who created the computers. But what about giving credit to that scientist who created the brain that created the computer? So we must acknowledge that scientist who created the brain that created the computer. And that, that scientist's name is Boga. You know, the scientists, they produce one test tube baby. And it comes in the headlines of the newspapers all over the world. But Prabhupada said, Krishna is producing millions of test tube babies every second. So why don't you have it in Prabhada? It's with your headline every day. We give the Nobel Prize when somebody produces a test tube baby. We should give the Nobel Prize to Krishna every year because Krishna is producing millions of miracles every second. Yeah. Why the prayers should be chanted in the foreign language? <laughs> Hare Krishna is not a foreign language. Just like if I ask any of these Russians to speak one word of Hindi or Sanskrit, they will not be able to do. But when you ask them to pronounce Hare Krishna, they have near problem. Like, what is your name? Slav. Stanislav. Yeah. So Yaroslav. So Yaroslav, do you speak one word of English? No, 
He says no. Then he speak English. Okay, near. You speak Hindi. No. No. You speak Sanskrit. No. You wasted your whole life. But can you chant? Can you repeat Hare Krishna? So Pastor Hare Krishna. <laughs> Say Hare Krishna. No, no. No, no, no. Just repeat Hare Krishna after me once. Hare Krishna. Okay, anyway. So the point is you have no difficulty in chanting Hare Krishna. But you have difficulty in speaking English, Hindi, Sanskrit. Why? You know, Hare Krishna is not a foreign language. Krishna is not a foreigner for you. You think if Krishna was a foreigner, all of you would have taken to Krishna consciousness? No. Krishna is not a foreigner. Krishna has been living in your heart for a long time. Now you have just realized where he is sitting and you are trying to worship him. Yes. Can the devotee go to the doctor, karma doctors? Yes, doctor, devotees can go to doctor, no problem. Because his body has to be used in the service of Krishna, you have to keep the body in good shape. If we don't look after the body properly, then how will you serve Krishna? So devotees must look after their bodies properly. They should be very, they, would, they should have a regulated diet so that they remain spiritually healthy. Okay, no talking in the middle. It's the same question. Okay. So I'm taking on two more questions only. Make sure they're philosophical questions. Question on book distribution. Okay. When you just sell books and don't say people take them back and if you didn't explain they go away. So what is does not matter whichever way you get them to take a book, get them to take a book. If you can sell more books without talking to them much, no problem. Prabhupada will speak to them and you give give the book in their hand. <laughs> Just like these days, everybody is fond of videos. Everybody wants to have a video machine and I'm seeing people these days don't go to the theater, you know that? In um, Western countries in India, people are watching the movies at home on their video. So distributing these books is like distributing a Krishna video. Then you change the mantra before only Jikasana. After you know, Prabhupada can we say the name of our spiritual master if you not initiate it. Yes. Any more questions? Yes. In Kiev there's a police in Kiev the police very often take devotees from the street and take books from them. And when next time they see the devotees, they say, oh, again, this is Hare Krishna. And is it auspicious for them? Can they become devotees in the next world? Well, every time they chant Hare Krishna, they get a plus point. <laughs> <laughs> of course, this doesn't mean that you purposely get arrested to make them chant. But if they arrest you, then if they take the name of Krishna, they get benefits. You tell them this is perestroika, spiritual perestroika. We are restructuring the society to accept God is the supreme. That is all. So, I think, uh, uh, yes, any question? Yeah. Nick, Nick, you just came or you were there earlier also? <laughs> if one be a tourist. Huh? If one be a tourist and some accident like storm and and um, it is said that Yamadutas will not take this person physically. <laughs> if you wear Tulsi and also if you're chanting Hare Krishna. But if you don't if you're not chanting Hare Krishna, you're not following the rules and just putting on Tulsi, <laughs> then you cannot accept expect same protection. Just like if you're really a member of the army. Then you, when you put on uniform, you'll be respected. But if you just put on the uniform of somebody else and you're not a member of the army, then you can't expect the same, well, the respect. Okay? So you're wearing Tulsi, Nick, but you chant Paftari Hare Krishna also. So I want to thank the devotees for uh, allowing me to preach for the last four days. Very soon now I have to leave your wonderful, beautiful city. This was my first visit to your city. Even though I came to your country in 1976, but I never came to Kiev before. I can see that in Ukraine, there are so many small yatras now. 
and the people of this kind of this republic are becoming the boga conscious my understanding is ukrainians they have a uh, roman catholic background people here are christians there's some religious background here no my understanding is the people here are religious background is religious no when i was a student in toronto canada in 1960 uh, 1967 this was one year before i met prabhu pad in 1968 june my landlord was from ukraine so he always used to tell me about ukraine and everything about the ukrainian history <laughs> of course at that time i never thought that i would ever visit ukraine but now since there are krishna conscious communities here lord chaitanya brings me here so my request to all of you is please remain steady on the spiritual path which prabhupada has given us in his books and then you will taste the real sweetness real sweetness of life is spiritual life material happiness is deceiving the maya magic makes you believe that illicit sex intoxication etc is enjoyable but compared to spiritual happiness it is not enjoyable rupa goswami has discussed three types of happiness material happiness he says it begins and at any time it can end and the happiness of impersonal realization even if you multiply it a trillion fold it cannot compare to the happiness of spiritual life a spiritual happiness is always increasing in the material world they have a law which in economics is there any economic students here no economic students <laughs> okay in the material world they have a law which is called the law of decreasing return Did you understand this decreasing return? It means suppose you are very hungry, the first chapati you will eat, you will get maximum taste. But the second chapati you will eat, you will get taste but little less than the first chapati. And the third chapati you will eat, you will get taste but less than the second chapati. And eventually you will say, enough, no more. You understand? This is the logic, but in spiritual life, this law does not work. The more you chant Hare Krishna, the more you feel like chanting Hare Krishna. The more you surrender to Krishna, the sweeter spiritual life becomes. The more austerities you perform, the more beautiful Krishna looks. Even though Krishna is most beautiful, actually Krishna doesn't look beautiful to us. Because if Krishna really looked beautiful to us, we would never take our eyes away from Krishna. But now you look at Krishna for five minutes, and then your mind just gets distracted. You want to look at something else. When you finish chanting your sixteen rounds, you think, "Oh, I've done a big job." Now you don't want to chant again. When you're doing your japa, and somebody comes to talk to you, you very gladly begin to talk to him. But when you're hungry and you're eating, and somebody comes to talk to you, you say, "Later on, now I'm in samadhi." Because, because. We have attraction for Prashad, but not very deep attraction for Krishna. So we have to make our attraction for Krishna stronger. Prapa said, just like a man who is wrestling, the more he practices wrestling, the stronger he becomes. Similarly, the more we practice Krishna consciousness, the stronger you will become. Today, when I was coming to this program, I saw on the way there was a railway track in which a train was going, a good train. And ahead of that, there was a man. He was running on the railway track. He was racing with a train. So he's racing. Why every morning? Why do why do people go jogging on the road? Because they believe in the principle: practice makes a man perfect. So similarly, practice of Krishna consciousness will make you perfect. Practice of Maya will make you perfect in Maya. Practice of Krishna consciousness will make you perfect in Krishna consciousness. But you do not have to practice Maya, Maya. The animal learn how to eat, sleep, defend, and mate without going to school for one minute. The animal doesn't go to school to learn how to eat, sleep, defend, and mate. Speak loudly, clear, they can't. So, boy, we don't have to learn how to practice Maya. We have to learn how to forget Maya. That is the process of Krishna consciousness. So, all of you should take part in Hari Nam. Hari Nam was started by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as a means to distribute the mercy of the Lord. In Hari Nam, everybody benefits. The devotee who is chanting, he benefits. 
the devotee who is listening, he benefits. The people who are listening, they benefit. And even those who come and criticize you, uh, look at this crazy Hare Krishna, they benefit. The trees and the plants benefit. And the animals that you can't see, they benefit. So, Hare Nam and book distribution. It is very nice. Just like the steel is a practical magnet, all of you appear to have a natural attraction for book distribution. Mm -hmm. So, Prabhupada very greatly encouraged book distribution, not because book distribution is an activity that makes profit, because book distribution is an activity that gives one the opportunity to develop love of God. So, if you can, read, associate with devotees, do Harinam, do book distribution, then whether you are Vyasta or Brahmachari or Brahmacharani or housewife, your ticket to back to Godhead is guaranteed. Okay, Hare Krishna. Did you benefit from these lectures a little bit? Usually when I come, wherever I go, I give a lot of philosophical lectures. If your devotees become good in the philosophy, then you will be easy to fight. It will be easy to fight Maya. So now, we will do prayers to Lord Nasingha there, and then I'll end the program.